Hello, and welcome to Introducing Lobbies in IFS Field Service Management. I'm Christine Lavoy, a Senior Client Account Manager at IFS North America, and today we are going to walk through an introduction of the Lobbies functionality in IFS Field Service Management. Lobbies provide your users, managers, and senior executives with a one-page stop of all the information they care about to do their job. It reduces the screen jumps and makes it easier for your teams to do their jobs. Whether it's a lobby in your shipping dock showing key shipping metrics for the team or a screen in a corner office showing service financial metrics, lobbies provide the information needed for specific individual jobs. Lobbies in IFS field service management are used to view near real-time changing information on FSM. A lobby provides an overview for individuals, business roles, and processes. Lobbies were added to the application in FSM 563, and the functionality has expanded with every release. Lobbies provided by IFS are part of the base application, and you can personalize those lobbies per user. If you want to create lobbies, your own data elements, or build new lobbies, you will need to purchase the Lobby Configuration Tool, which is an add-on module with an FSM and is enabled on your license key as available or not available. Lobbies are used to monitor processes and provide visual representation. They provide information on business performance, in addition to amount of sales, number of invoices per customer, customer satisfaction, escalation, advise users of priorities requiring actions, warranty claim status, and any other information you can think of in the application. In addition, you can, using a lobby tile and an embedded URL link, include data from other systems. A rule configured lobby should be the first screen your user sees in the application and it can be defaulted from the information on your person record. They will save users time by putting all of the relevant information at your user's fingertips by providing information on what needs to be actioned by priority and importance. If you go into the application on the details tab you will see initial lobby ID. You can select the lobbies that exist and attach it to your person record. So here you see the lobbies that are created in this system and I'm going to attach the service manager lobby to my person record. And then save the change. The next time I log in that lobby will be the first screen I see. Lobbies give your users the ability to, instead of going from three, five, ten screens at the start of their shift to figure out current state, what needs to be actioned and what is happening, which was typical before lobbies, and then going back into all of those screens to look at shipments, unassigned tasks, and other information. to a single consolidated screen showing the information that may be actioned by priority with drill down for more details, giving your users a single view. FSM comes with a series of default lobbies which can be personalized. We provide lobbies related to service, contracts, dealer information, dispatch information, repair information, and system performance information. These lobbies are available at either the individual engineer or warehouse lobby, or the manager of the warehouse, service, or repairs. If you want to personalize an existing lobby from IFS, you click on the unlock icon and enter personalization mode. You can then make changes to color, sizing, and layout of the lobby. 
Then you click on the personalized lock to save again. So if I come into the application, lobbies are available as a menu section. If you only have the lobbies from IFS, the only selection you will see is overview. If you've purchased the lobby configuration tool, you will also see the data source designer and the element designer. Here you see the default repair bench lobby, and I have the ability to change my default data based on place ID and person ID by clicking on the drop down. So I can change the information I'm filtering. I see screens that I can jump to, and I see the default tiles provided by IFS. If I want to go in and personalize my lobby, I can unlock by clicking on the person unlock button, and I will be taken into personalization mode for the repair bench engineer lobby. So from here, I can make changes to what my lobby looks like. Say for example, because escalations are important, I want to change my text color to red, and I want to make my background color dark blue. I can close that, and you will see on my lobby, my escalation lobby tile looks different. If I don't like how it turned out, I can reset my personalization and make a different choice. I can also change the layout in personalization mode. So I can move lobby tiles around within the personalization. Once I save the changes, when I come into the lobby, you will see the changes that I made have saved as a personalized lobby. You may decide that the lobbies created from IFS don't have sufficient information, or you want to take advantage of different fields you're using, or user-defined fields you've created. You may want to embed a link to another system. Let's take a look at a variety of lobbies that have been created over various demonstrations. These are from demos that have been done for customers or prospects using the lobby configuration tool. In this first example, it provides a couple interesting features as ITEL, ITEL runs FSM with dynamic scheduling. So they've embedded a link on the screen to show PSO scheduling map information within the FSM application. They've also provided a list of SLAs in Jeopardy as their first most important thing to do, along with uptime, first time fix rates, and average response times. In this example, you will see that links have been embedded to frequently used screens as quick actions. A graph has been added showing compliant work versus capacity so that it gives you a forward-looking view of what your service manager needs to know. In this example, it's a repair manager screen showing failures in warranties, along with future commitments and backlogs. This view introduces stoplights where you set targets. And based on the defined comparisons to the stoplights, the stoplights provide red, yellow, and green based on the conditional state that you define. 
along with providing information from mobile on the screen with active mobile users and escalations and past due work. This logistics manager view provides information about stock levels that have not been authorized, along with receiving discrepancies all in a single glance. Changing color to red for critical information at a single glance. In this warranty view, we add themed colors for the customer along with RMAs, tags and processes, and other trends in your repair depot. In this view, customer logos and themes have been added to make it appear completely corporate themed with no coding involved. And in this last view, we provide information coming from the IoT connector into the application to monitor what's happened. Configure to the customer needs and providing current information about the machines and how they're running in real time live. Now that we've seen some examples of what can be done in a lobby, let's look at the lobby designer and how you build the lobby in FSM. Before you start, lay out your plan. What are your key metrics, KPIs, and role that you're defining? What data points are relevant to that user, and what do they need to do the job? It may be worth just sitting down and watching your user through a typical day for a, couple, for a period of time to know what screens they go to and what screens they care about, what data they're compiling, and what reports they're still running so that you can design a lobby screen that adds value to their day-to-day -day life. The lobby designer is built to make screen changes easier with drag and drop editor, ability to relabel, compose queries, and conditional formatting. Before you begin your lobby build, I would recommend that you start with an existing lobby as a starting point, but you can start from new if you choose to. The lobby designer is composed of a data source designer, an element designer, and then you lay it out into a lobby page. Let's start with data sources. What data do I want to display? A data source is information based on a database query. Information from the data source is fed to an element which displays the data. We supply four methods to specify a query. If you have experience in SQL, you can directly write the conditional format in SQL commands. Also, if you have experience with performs, you can directly specify condition statements using perform statements. In addition, you can use client scripting to directly specify statements using the client scripts. Or if you choose, as you're not comfortable writing SQL, you can always use the query builder to specify conditions. You can use the supplied tables and views as source of all information, or you can create your own views as well. If you're not familiar with SQL and you want to join tables or views, Use the SQL build queries to the database query results used in elements. The data source includes the table or view that contains the information you want, the conditions, if any, to filter the information, and the columns that contain the information you want to display. Multiple elements can be used for information from one data source. I would encourage, as you start your lobby journey, to limit who has access to create data sources. You may want to only have certain people in your organization be able to create data sources, but many be able, people be able to take the data sources and then apply them to elements and layouts. You must be a studio user 
it, to be able to access data sources and elements, but you could eliminate the data source designer in a role for some users. Poorly defined data sources are one of the biggest problems I see in the application when people are complaining about performance. The other thing that you'll want to set is your refresh rate. That will also cause queer performance issues in your application. So let's look at what it takes to create a data source. How you're going to create your data source depends on what your comfort level is. Users creating a data source via SQL will have SQL knowledge along with an understanding of the basic data structures. Custom views can be created in SQL and then used in the data source. The results panel shows the first 40. If a column is to be used in an element, then make sure it's in all of the results. Because if it's not in the results, you cannot be using it in an element. The first option you have when building a data source is using the query builder. This screen is used to specify the data source. The screen is separated into three areas. The left side is used to specify the field value of the design. If you look at the screen, the center is used to preview the data source and its output. The right side of the screen is used to list the data source already set up, separated by methods to create the data source. The screen is used to specify the data source by specifying the SQL. The screen is separated in the action areas and you select what data source you want to use. You can add names, enter table values, enter condition codes, you can group the data, you can order by and choose the column, and then immediately see the preview using the query builder. Then you can click New to build another query. You can also have input parameters and defaults. Parameters are enclosed by a dollar sign. Parameters can be specified on a lobby with an optional default value that can be hard-coded or derived from a substitution variable. You can change the values of the parameters in the lobby and all data sources that are using parameters shown in the lobby will automatically be updated to use the new parameter value. If the lobby does not have a default value for a parameter, then data sources that use the parameter will not show data until the user enters a value or parameter. When previewing data sources and elements, values for parameters must be entered. You can use parameters to filter the queries. A column name enclosed by the dollar sign sets the value. The parameter is specified. In this example, place ID equals the place ID parameter, where the person enters the place on the element and it's used to filter the information or exclude data based on a specific place. Here, you decide whether the, how the input is coming in are on your parameter. Is it a preset value, a user input value, or are you using a substitution variable? In this case, you see the person ID is a substitution variable of user ID, and I've hard-coded the value of open. So I'm seeing the user ID and status of open. You can use substitution variables to help you form your queries. Substitution variables are enclosed by hash symbols. When used, a value is returned as if it were a database value. IFSM comes with a series of default parameters which include common default values like today, 
now, start of the month, and a series of other parameters that are available as defaults. Now let's look at what is a data element. An element is a series of specifications that define how information from a data source is displayed in the lobby. The data source performs the SQL queries and the element defines how and where the results appear. For example, you can display information in counters, bar charts, line charts, or pie charts. An element includes a layout, a data display, navigation, and formatting. Elements are created in the element designer screen and elements are deployed onto a lobby. You can define the color, background, tile, tile visibility, and text color. If we look at it, you can your lobby element types that are available are text, counts, a specific image, a gauge, a matrix of information. You can have lists. You can have line charts, bar charts, pie charts, a series of links to other screens, or state gauges that tell you information about your element. Let's go over to the application and look a little bit more at lobbies. Here we see a lobby that I have created. I started at the service manager lobby, I made a copy, and then I created changes to the lobby elements. You'll see that I have the ability to drill into my unfinished tasks when I get a float over and it'll take me to the details behind the information that is in that lobby tile. I can see my bars and graphs, and I've given myself the ability to have a dropdown where I can see additional information about that product information in that graph. I've changed colors, I've changed labels, I have list views. I have the ability to scroll through data if I have more than one set of data um, longer than the data in this cube. So as I'm flipping through the pages and you'll see my screen occasionally refreshes because I have my refresh rate set for a demo environment. You will see when I come in to unlock on this screen and I go into my lobby elements, I have more choices because instead, unlike personalization mode, I see my data source designer and I see my element designer where I can make additional changes to my tiles. It tells me what page it's on, it tells me my data source, it tells me any parameters that I have coming in it, I have the ability to label my titles, my size of my element, my colors, and my background, along with the navigation. So in my element designer, I get to change the layout, the data, the navigation, the formatting, and the information. As you start your lobby journey, let's go through some things that will make lobby creation easier. Separate your data carefully. Make sure that you understand any access groups that are in place, roles, and business roles. Create elements and lobbies accordingly. Elements and lobbies should filter for access groups and should be relevant to the person using the lobby. It's easiest to start with a lobby template and copy it as opposed to trying to create a lobby from scratch. Use dummy data for KPIs and standards, and then you can build your first time fix rates, jobs per day, etc.
Create a lobby that supports the process and interacts with it. Lobbies are more than just for looks. Lobbies need to add value to your user's day-to-day -day life. When you go to build lobbies, if you don't know what the name of the field is, you can double click on any field in the application and it will tell you the table name and column name that the information is stored on. So by double clicking on task ID, I get the field information that is coming from the table task and the field is task underscore ID. This is true even if you've used localization to privately label the messages. The double click will show you the actual name in the table to build your query or to build your element. If you go to view information, you can see it get help on the entire table. And again, you can get to the table name and column. Metadata Explorer, which is available for Studio users, shows you the table structure and you can get the relationships along with the key values so that you can put keys in your queries. If you need more information, the FSM metadata provides field lookup relationship data and select information for each FSM field. If you're using custom metadata, you can go to the custom metadata table and that will provide information related to field lookups, relationship definitions, and select information for each custom field. Don't forget to take advantage of the FSM documentation. IFS has an introduction to lobbies guide which is a good place to start if you're going to start building lobby configurations. Now, let's walk through creating a page. You would start with your lobby overview and you'd either choose to copy, duplicate a lobby, or create new. Then, from your create new, you give it a title and you set up the information for your new lobby. So here on the overview, I can either choose to create a completely new page or I can choose to duplicate or copy the page. So when I click on duplicate, I'm going to say I want to copy which components of this page. And in this case, I'm going to select everything and I'm going to say, OK, create a copy of all of this information. The system is going to go ahead and default in all of the information based on the technician lobby provided by IFS. And now you'll see I have a copy of the technician lobby. And if I right click on it, I can go in and edit the page. I can give my page a name. This is Christine's technician lobby. I can give my text colors. I can select a background image to personalize my page with additional information. I can default in the values and I can make additional changes. I'd encourage you to create standards um, and provide a description of why you are creating this lobby so that you remember what it was created for. Thank you for spending this time with me today to discuss building lobbies in IFS field service management. 
I hope you found the time well spent and that you have a good day.